for he's the answer to a poor man's prayer. Edward Everett Horton is the private secretary. Break your neck. What's in the trunk? Hello, Catamo. We just dropped in to say goodbye. Well, you get a bit fine, aren't you? Yes. Both legal now. Help yourselves. Thanks. Get on with the pack in there. Well, jolly good luck, Bob, and a safe voyage. Thanks. Do you board to England? Rather. So many years since I was over there, you know. Besides, I have no choice. The doctor insists on my going home. Oh, nothing wrong, I hope. Oh, no, nothing serious. But I know I've got a liver, and I have a shrewd suspicion that I'm putting on weight. What the devil are you staring at? Never married a catamole, were you? Married? Good God, no, I never slipped up as badly as that. <laughs> <laughs> Any relations? Yes, one, a nephew, my late brother's boy. Douglas Catamole. Anything like his uncle? I don't know, I've never seen him. But from all I hear of him, he's a regular chip in the old block. Yes, I'll bet he is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and he'd better be. He's going to inherit my money. <laughs> You're going to have your hands full, then. Oh, that doesn't worry me. I could forgive a boy anything. As long as he's not one of those effeminate young ninnies we hear so much about nowadays. That's the one thing I couldn't stand for. Not much fear of that if he's a catamo. Uh, <laughs> well, here's jolly good luck to the absent nephew. Thanks. And if he's what I think he is, I dare say he's raising a glass in England just about now. Never, never. On Douglas, old man, that's your tenth glass this evening. Is it? I haven't bothered to count. Why, oh, look here, we call it chap. Will you get us chucked out in a minute? Chucked out? I'd like to see anybody chuck me out. Really, Mr. Catamore. You cannot break glasses like this. Like what? Why, that? Oh, you mean like this? Come on, Douglas, <laughs> chuck it, old man. Let's get home. Home, my dear fellow. Why, the evening hasn't even begun yet. Evening? Why, yes. it's morning. Do you realize it's broad daylight? I don't care what sort of daylight it is. I'm not coming. All right, have it your own way. Yes. Girls, for heaven's sake, see him home somehow. We will. All right, I'm off. No, no, no. Bills, bills, nothing but bills. I'll be worth this while to open them. No, and I expect we'll have the usual crowd of creditors here again today. Just look at them. Where's it all going to end? I don't know. I suppose I'd better go and wake Mr. Catamore. Wake him, don't be silly. Mummy's not home yet. It's only breakfast time. There. Now go and have a cold bath. Oh, I'm all right. All I wanted was some air. Oh, don't forget the bracelet that you <laughs> promised me. And my watch. Darling, I'll give you anything except a ring. Oh. Goodbye. See you tonight, same place. Goodbye. Yes, it's him all right. Well, I'll bring in the coffee. That's what he'll be wanting. Black and strong. Morning, Mrs. Stead. Good morning, Mrs. Good morning, Annie. Good morning. Hello. Your breakfast is ready. Huh? Oh, Lord. What's all this? Eh? 
Bills, same oh, as well, usual. Put them on the table with the others. I don't want them. Oh, Lord. What's you saying for? Well, look at them all, waiting to be paid. And the life you're living, sir. Oh, so you disapprove, do you, Annie? Well, I think it's... Ah, now, you must be broad-minded. Have you never been out on the loose? The loose? Yes. Have some hopeful young man take you in the park after dark. Lord, no, sir. <laughs> I'd like to see the young man who'd take me in the park after dark. Yes. Now you mention it, so should I. I'm a God-fearing girl, I am, and I praise for protection against temptation. I don't think you need worry, Annie. Any protection which Providence fails to give you, nature's already supplied. Yes. Yeah. As for those bills, they won't have to wait much longer. I have an uncle. Yes, you'll need one, but well, what can we take him? <laughs> oh, no, not that sort of an uncle. A real uncle, a rich one. What the devil's that? Well, it's another creditor, I expect. Yes, it sounds like Gibson, my tailor. If it is Annie, stave him off, get rid of him. Say I'm not in. Say I passed out. Say anything, only get rid of him. Good morning. Morning, sir. Mr. Catamone in? Uh, no, sir. Oh, but early for him to be out and about, isn't it? Well, sir, the fact is, he's been out all night. Well, he's got to come back sometime. I'll step in and wait. Oh, but, sir. Oh. I don't know. Do you smoke cigars? No, sir, I can't afford them. Then who does? <laughs> Come on, my girl, don't try to deceive me. Where's Mr. Catamo? Well, sir, the fact is he's gone straight to bed. He's worn out. Then go and wake him. Oh, I daresn't. Then I'll wait. I know it's no good you're waiting. Once Mr. Catamo goes to bed, he sometimes stays there for months at a time. Oh, he does, does he? We'll soon see about that. <laughs> Mr. Catamo! Well, I'll come back later. And when you see him, tell him this. I'm going to have my money. Yes, sir. And you can also tell him, if he tries to dodge me any longer, it'll be the worse for him. It's all right, he's gone. Yes, I know, Annie, thank you. But he's coming back... Coming back later for his money, I know, I heard. Oh, do take that breakfast away. Yes, sir. What was it you were saying about your uncle? Oh, yes, my uncle. Well, I have an uncle, and he's very rich, and... Oh, Lord, Annie, if that's another creditor, tell him I've died. In the night, this morning, tell him anything, only get rid of him. Yes, sir. Morning, Annie. Where is he? Bedroom. It's all right, Douglas. He doesn't want his breakfast. Don't me. My dear fellow, I do wish you wouldn't knock like a creditor. I've got far worse news for you than a creditor. Good Lord, what? Gibson. Oh, he's been here, but I didn't see him. No, well, I did. He came to my place first. You mean you let him catch you? Well, he caught me off my guard. You know my uncle's engaged a new private secretary? Well? Well, he gave him my address so that I could run him down to Marsland Court in the car. Uh -huh. I was waiting for him to arrive in Walks Gibson. What did he say? He wants that thousand pounds he lent me on that bill. You mean the bill I... You backed for me. I backed for you, exactly. And he won't wait any longer. Do you know he's got out a judgment order against us? What? And now he threatens us with a couple of writs. If we don't pay at once, we shall see the inside of Brixton. I must have a drink. Now, Harry, don't get panicky. My uncle's on his way back from India. Your uncle? What about mine? Old Uncle Marsland. He cut me off with a bob. You know what he's like? The complete old English gentleman. Master of foxhounds. Dark, dammy, sir. Ride straight. Live straight. He'd pass out. It won't come to that. I don't see what's going to stop it. It's only a matter of dodging those writs for a day or two until my uncle arrives. Yes, but how's that going oh. to help? He's rolling in money. I'm his only relative and he'll settle up like a bird. Yes, yes, but till then. I'll come down with you to Marsland Court. Not a hope, old boy. Your name's Mud down there. They all heard about your goings on. They wouldn't have you in the place. Who's there? Oh, excuse me. But do you know you left me in the passage? Good heavens, I'd forgotten all about you. Come in, come in. Sure, I'm not including. No, no, not at all. Let me introduce you. Douglas, this is the Reverend Robert Spaulding. He's going to be my uncle's new private secretary. How do you do? Uh, how, how, how do you do? You're quite sure that I'm not in the way? Oh, no, not in the least. Sit down. Except at home. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's an idea. Oh, 
Oh, no, no, thank you. No, I I never take stimulants. <laughs> I see. Then let me take your umbrella. Oh, thank you. I, I might forget it. I'd rather keep it, if you don't mind. <laughs> yes. Could you tell me when we start for Mr. Marsden's home in the country, as all my goods and chattels are still at the hotel? You seem to be in a great hurry. Don't you... don't you like London? No, I don't like London. I'm so used to my quiet little study in Lincolnshire that London quite alarms me. Everywhere I go, I see written up, beware of pickpockets. Do you know, one is kept perpetually busy guarding one's pockets. My dear fellow, it's not as bad as that. Oh, but yes. And then, London is always so full of the unexpected. Why, only yesterday I wanted some luncheon, so I went to the British Museum to buy a bath bun. Well, there I met a gentleman who invited me to lunch. And it ended with our having a very good meal, indeed. <laughs> hmm. But do you know, when it came to paying, he found that his purse had been stolen. Yes. Luckily, I had mine with me, so I could pay for him. <laughs> God, splendid! Oh, but that's not all. No? No. Only this morning, I met a young lady in a tram car. Who had also lost her purse. No. No? No. She had lost her aunt. She was very nice. She told me her father was a clergyman and asked me to protect her. She was very nice. Well, do you know, we searched for that aunt all morning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, without result. Well, it resulted in very grave expenditure. I fear if this continues that I shall spend all my money. So I think, if you don't mind, that I'll fetch my goods and chattels from the hotel and make ready for departure to the peace and quiet of the country. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I knew I'd forget it. My umbrella. <laughs> I'll take it with me, if you don't mind. I've noticed that when one forgets one's umbrella, it's always sure to rain. Good morning. Oh, my galoshes. Do you know that I suffer so much from chronic influenza and compelled to wear these? Let me help you. Oh, no, 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 thank you, thank you. I, I can manage. Perfectly. Good morning. I think I'd better see him out. Just a moment. That fellow's given me an idea. What? My uncle's never seen Spaulding. He's never seen you either, has he? No. Then be Spaulding. Be the private secretary. Come down with me and take his place. Lie low till your uncle turns up. We can leave old Spaulding here in your rooms until called for. Excuse me, but could you indicate to me in which direction Bloomsbury lies? I'm very anxious to return to the Green Street Temperance Hotel. I was dashed here by Mr. Marsden in one of those auto taxi meters, and I'm a little vague as to my whereabouts. You're not going to walk, are you? Oh, yes, that was my intention, certainly. Well, it's a good three mile. Oh, really? Oh, is it? Oh, dear, dear. Mm. You think, then, that an omnibus is indicated? Yes. Take the 37 and get out of the Bambury Arms. That's at the corner of Green Street. Yes. You'll get there just about opening time, if you're lucky. Oh, shall I? Shall I, indeed? How fortunate, yes. Mm. I've noticed that so many of the London streets are closed to traffic, yes. <laughs> mm. You know, Harry, this idea of yours is a brainwave. Mm, not bad. I shan't be long getting ready. And all I've got to do is to pack a bag, get out the old car, and off we go. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Come on. All right. Uh, excuse me, madam, but could you tell me, does this bus go to the Banbury Arms? I'm not familiar with the London public houses. And judging by your attire, you should not be either. Thank you. All first, please. Oh, I wish to alight at the Banbury Arms. Come. There, please, miss. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I, I seem to have left all my money at home. Hmm. That's a pity, isn't it? Yes, it is, isn't it? I suppose I shall have to get off. Unless, of course, some gentleman will. Pay my fare for me. Oh, really? Oh, well, I, I decline. Positively, I, I regret. I, no. No. Excuse me. Here, you don't get off here. This ain't the Banbury Arms. <laughs> 
Are you all right, sir? Well, I, I hope so. I, yes, I think so. Thank you. I'm shaken a bit, but not fractured. Thank you so much. There. Now I'm all ready. Good. We'll just wait for Spaulding's return, and then... We vanish. We vanish. clerical bloke never get here? Mr. Spaulding, sir. Ah, here I am. I trust I haven't kept you waiting. Oh, thank you. I've been slightly encumbered with my goods and chattels. And so many people in London, you know, really, I think there must be an excursion from Lincoln. Let me see. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, when do we start? Well, as a matter of fact, you don't start. Oh, has there been some modification of our program? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I just heard from my uncle, and he wishes you to stay here. Here? Yeah. Oh, uh, in London, but I've already told you I don't like now, London. Now, don't worry. It won't cost you a cent. Douglas and I are just going out of town for a bit, and these rooms of his are entirely at your disposal. You mean that... Uh, I mean that you stay here and make yourself thoroughly comfortable. Oh. Well, the rooms are very commodious. And they have a south aspect. Oh, have they? Yes. yes. Really, isn't that thoughtful? <laughs> if you please, sir, that... Oh, Andy, come here. Tell your mother that Mr. Marsland and I are going to the country that that gentleman is going to stay here for a few days, and above all, not a word to Gibson. Oh, but it isn't only Mr. Gibson, sir. What about all those other bills waiting to be paid? I've told you not to worry about them. I have an uncle. Oh, yes. Who is very rich. Come along, old man. Yes. The sooner we're out of this, the better. Oh, but, sir, your uncle. Well, he... Oh, I think it's another of them, sir. Probably Gibson back. Come on, this way. Pardon me, but isn't there somebody knocking at the door? Uh, yes. I thought so. As I'm to be here for a number of days, could you tell me where I could deposit my goods and chattels? In the bedroom, sir. Annie, will you open that door? Dear, dear, I don't like London. Mr. Douglas Catamore's place? Uh, yes, sir. He's just... Well, why the devil does he keep me waiting? Here, take this. Oh, but, sir... Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where's who, sir? My nephew. My name's Catamole. C-A-T-T-E-I-M-O-L-E. Catamole of India. Where's my nephew? Oh, you're the uncle? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, but he's just gone out. Oh, gone out, is he? Well, I suppose you know all about him. What kind of a lad is he? A bit of a dog, eh? A bit of a young rip, what? Uh -huh. Rip, sir? Yes, rip. Don't take the words out of my mouth. When I say rip, I mean rip. Oh, no, sir. He's the steadiest young man in London. Steadiest young man in London? Well, how does he spend his time? Well, he studies, sir. Studies? Oh, studies for me, mean goes racing, eh? Huh? Oh, no. Huh? I mean, he studies books, sir. What kind of books? Well, all kind of books. Yes, but what sort of books? Well, all sort of books. Yes, but what kind of all sorts of books? Oh, oh, oh. Ah, whiskey. And very good whiskey, too. But he doesn't drink it, sir. No, that's what we keep in the house in case of illness. Illness? What does he drink? Barley water. Barley water? Barley water. Barley water? Bah. But never strong drink. Oh. Has any debts? Oh, no, sir. No debts and doesn't drink? Why, he must be a perfect ninny. I oh, know he's not, sir. And he's very good looking. Uh, good looking, eh? He takes after his uncle, eh? Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you mean by ha ha ha? And he's very quiet and retiring. Who is he? Well, how's his liver? 
I assure you, sir, I've never seen such a thing in the house. Oh, you're a fool. No, I'm not, sir. I say you are a fool. When I say you are a fool, you are a fool. Yes, sir. Why didn't you say so? No, no, don't be so violent, sir. You sit down. I don't want to sit down. I refuse to sit down. I won't sit down. Bah! I like to fool a note. Come, pensing and paper, pensing and paper. You'll find everything over there. I don't want everything over there. I want everything over here. Yes, sir. Come, pensing and paper. Hurry up, hurry up. I got you as slow as a coolie. There you are, sir. Yes, I know that, but where's the paper? The pen. Where's the pen, the pen, the pen, the pen, the pen? Well, there you are, sir. It's in your hand. Yes, I know that, but that's in the ink, is it? The ink, the ink, the ink, the ink. There you are, sir. I don't want to drink it. I want to write with it. Put it down, put it down. Now, where's the paper, the paper, the paper, the paper? They want lots of paper. I don't want lots of paper. I only want one sheet. For goodness sake, take yourself off. Well, if you please, Mr. Catamount, I only want to say one word. I don't want to hear one word. I say go, and when I say go, I mean go. But it's about your nephew. I don't want to hear about my nephew. I've heard quite enough about the fool. Here, here's a bit of blotting paper. Go and blot yourself out. Yes, sir. <laughs> By heavens, a sky pilot. Excuse me, but do you know? You? They told me you've gone out. Oh, no, 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 I've been lying down. I'm subject to slight headaches. Headaches? In my head. Huh. So you're the heap of misery that half would cause good looking. Oh, I don't doubt you are surprised, but do you know? No, I don't know, and don't do that. Surprised? Huh. Lucky, I have a constitution that can stand a shock. Shock? Yes. Have you ever looked at yourself in a glass? Oh, yes, yes. That's my invariable habit when shaving. So you see it every morning? Every morning, yes. Oh, I, I don't wish to appear unduly sensitive, but your remarks seem to be rather personal. How's your liver? My what? Your liver. Oh, oh, my liver. Oh, it's nicely. Very nicely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and yours? Never mind about mine. Look after your own. Thank you. What on earth are you wearing on your feet? These are my galoshes. Galoshes? What do you wear galoshes for? Well, do you know? No, I don't know, and don't do that. I suffer so from chronic influenza. Influenza? Chronic. Chronic? Influenza. Yeah. Yes. I'm compelled to wear these to keep my feet warm whilst walking. Walking? Why do you want to walk? Well, do you know? No, I don't know, and don't do that. The taxi fares I find are so extortionate. London is really a most expensive place, and everybody seems to have designs upon my purse, which, unfortunately, is but lightly filled. Huh? He's a fool. Is he? Do you mean to tell me that you've been living here from hand to mouth and hadn't got the courage to write for money? I don't understand, really. But you've an uncle. A rich uncle. An influential uncle. A wealthy uncle. You, you, you have an uncle, damn it. No, I have an uncle Robert. Exactly. And why the devil didn't you write to him when you were hard up? Come. Hand over your wallet. My what? I want your wallet. Oh, excuse me. Your wallet. Oh, no, no, really. Come on, your wallet. I help, want your help, wallet. Help, 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 help. I want your wallet. No. Oh, you're a fool. A ninny. An incapoo. I'm disgusted with you. And either you mend your ways, or you can expect nothing from me. Well, why should I expect anything? Don't interrupt, sir. Oh, sorry, I thought you'd finished. You know what I'd like to do with you? No. I'd like to pump some red blood into your veins and drain away the milk and water which has gotten into your system. Oh, that sounds very painful. You bet it will be. Well, do you know? Don't do that. I'm going to the country for a few days. In the meantime, you do some hard thinking. Some hard thinking. What would you suggest I think about? The best and quickest way to make a man of yourself. Bah! Oh. I don't like London. You know, I'm beginning to funk this private secretary game. I don't think I can do it. Why even not? Well, supposing your uncle asked me to take down shorthand or something. Remember, I've only been to a public school. It isn't as though I've been educated. <laughs> oh, here is uncle. Hello, Harry. How are you? How are you, uncle? Let me introduce your new private secretary, Mr. Spaulding. Oh, how do you do? Sir. Oh, how do you do, sir? How are you? Come with me and I'll tell you your duties. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Spaulding, I think that'll be the limit of your duties. The limit, sir? Oh, wait a bit. There's my cousin, Miss Ashford. She lives with me here. I dare say you've heard your late father speak about her. I don't think so, sir. Oh, well, she was a great friend of his. It was really she who persuaded me to engage you on that account. We have to humor her a good deal. Humor her, sir? Is she, uh, 
No, 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 nothing like that. No, she's a bit cracky, that's all. Oh, in what way, sir? Well, she's got into the hands of a fellow who pretends to be a spiritualist. As a matter of fact, he's no more a genuine spiritualist than I am. But we have to humor her. I see, sir. Well, do you feel feeling trying to tackle this job? Well, sir, to be perfectly frank, I... Oh, sorry, Father, I thought you were alone. Oh, it's all right, Edith. This is Mr. Spalding. He's going to be my new private secretary. How do my you daughter. do? How do you do? I hope you're going to like it here. Yes. Yes, I think I'm going to like it very much indeed, sir. <laughs> I hope you're not getting tired, Mr. Spalding. No, 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 not at all. It's good for me, really. The doctor told me I should take more exercise. Excuse me, Father. Now, you understand? Everything's perfectly in order. They both signed that bill and they're both equally responsible. You can serve the writ on either of them or both. Very good, sir. Now, no nonsense. As soon as the door opens in with your foot. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Mrs. Stead, is Mr. Ketamon in? No, sir. Oh, well, we'll see for ourselves. Come on. Right. No, you can't do this. There's one of them. Serve the writ. Oh, look here. You either accept service or you pay up. Are you speaking to me? You pay up. Pay up. It's your money we want. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. No, no. Yes. Come no, I say, now come here. No. no. Look here, that one. Oh, come on, now take it now. Now look here, we. No nonsense. You've got to accept it. I say, look here, I won't have any more. Here, stop. Come it's along so... now, this one. Good Lord. Wait a minute. No, I'd rather not, if you don't mind. Come back. He's not our man. Hi, come back. No. Come back. Hi, come back. Come back. Honesty, Edith. Edith? Well, that's your name. Yes, it is. Robert. Fine. Oh. Honest, Edith. Young Douglas Catamol isn't a bit like that. How do you know? We were at school together. Don't tell me that a young man who leads the sort of life he leads would make a good husband, because I simply won't believe... Husband? I didn't say anything about a husband. No, but father did. Do you mean your father wants you to marry young Douglas Catamo? He did. Old Mr. Catamo wrote from India and suggested it. And father thought it was an awfully good idea. Until I had a few words to say on the subject. Oh, but really? Anyhow, it doesn't matter to me. I wouldn't marry him if he were the last man on earth. You wouldn't? No. Five pounds for a new set of springs. Well, oh, God to blaze it. your own fault for driving such an old cock. You asked me to drive you, sir. What the devil do you mean? Here, you fair. Clear out. You tell Mr. Martin that Mr. Catamol is here. Certainly, sir. Uh, will you please step in, sir? Right. Where is Mr. Martin? He's in there, sir. I'll... Ah, you needn't announce me. I'll take him by surprise. We haven't met for some years. I want to see if he'll recognize me. Oh, but, sir... Oh, you bring in my baggage. Very good, sir. Who and ask this? I'll give you two guesses. Not Catamol? Ah. It is dear old Bob Catamol. <laughs> After all these years. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us you were coming? I wanted to surprise you. It's the biggest <laughs> surprise I've had for years. <laughs> my little nephew, Harry. Uh. I'm delighted to see you, sir. I've never been so delighted to see anybody in all my life. Uh. Will you excuse me one moment, sir? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Oh, well. <laughs> you old scoundrel. You old... Your Uncle Catamol's here. Here, in the house? Yes, and all our troubles are over. Oh, no. No, just a moment, old boy. All our troubles are not over. Don't be an ass. Of course they are. No more Bills, no more Ritz, no more Gibson. All you've got to do is to go in there and say, hello, Uncle, and he'll probably give you a couple of thousand just to get on with. No, I'm sorry. It can't be done. Have you gone crazy? Yes. Crazy over Edith. What? Did you ever see anyone like her? Hundreds. Don't be a fool, old boy. She's one in a million. But she's got the most frightful prejudice against Douglas Catamore. 
And if she ever found out that he was me, grammar or no grammar, she'd probably never speak to me again. Until, of course, she finds out that I'm a reformed character. A reformed character? Yes. As far as the old life's concerned, it's past and done with. That's fine. That's just fine. And how long will that take you? I don't care if it takes centuries. Well, I do. Unless you work pretty smart, my lad, I'm going to blow the whole gaff. You'll what? If you do, do you know what I'll do to you? I'll straighten a tie for you, old boy. I see you boys. Go and fetch Eve, will you? I wanted to meet Mr. Catterall. Oh, certainly, sir. You'll blow the gas. You haven't changed a bit. I've known you anywhere. <laughs> and you with a grown-up daughter. <laughs> By the way, before you see Edith, I'd better tell you, that little match you thought of. What match? Between Edith and your nephew. Don't give it another thought. I've seen him. Oh, Parker. Yes, miss? Hasn't Ashford come in yet? No, miss. I understand she may be late. Some spiritualistic meeting in the village, I gather. Thank you. I expect her astral body will come floating through one of the upper windows presently. <laughs> and you really think you will be able to arrange the sails for me? Oh, what could be easier? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get into touch with the dear departed Robert Spaulding? He was one of my dearest friends when I was a girl. Mm -hmm. We were quite what is now known as buddies. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, tell me, Miss Ashford, how long is it since the late Robert Spaulding uh, passed over? Close on 25 years. Oh, oh, that will require the services of a very highly skilled medium. <laughs> and they are uh, expensive. I quite understand. Oh, you do? Oh, isn't that splendid? Then if I can procure one, you may expect him tomorrow. Wonderful! Yes. Uh, now, I will wish you good night, Miss Ashford. Physically, of course. Psychically, I will remain with you on a higher plane. So comforting. Good night. I joke, Tom, you never told me your daughter was a beauty. Oh. Uh, you'll have a bit of trouble looking after her, or you'll have some young rip running away with her. Uh, your nephew, for instance, Mr. Catamore. My nephew. Don't mention that fellow to me. I cut off his head with a meat axe and let some of the sawdust out before I'd see him married to a fine girl like you. Oh, but I thought you... You thought I had an idea about a match. Yes, but that was before I saw him. Saw him? Yes, saw him in his rooms, the ninny. Look out, you fool, look out. Uh, Mr. Catamull's room is ready, sir. Thank you, Parker. I'll take you up. Ah. My dear, I'd like you to meet Mr. Catamull. Miss Ashford. Not THE Mr. Scaffoldpole from India. Catamull, madam. C-A-T-T-E-I-M-O-L-E, -E, Catamull. How delightful. We must have long talks about yogis and fakers. Oh, that's all hokum. You don't believe in spirits, then? Well, in moderation. But don't you believe they influence our lives for good? As long as you don't overdo them. I am devoting my entire life to them. Well, it has been done. Uh, well, I shall go to bed. I will wish you a physical good night. Psychically, I shall remain with you. Well, I hope not. The whole thing's obvious. He's been to my rooms, found Spaulding, and thinks he's me. Well, what are you going to do about it? Nothing, until I've made some kind of success well, with... Well? Oh. What are you two whispering about? Uh, nothing, my dear, nothing. Well, I must go to bed. Yes, early meet tomorrow. Father's finding you a month. Thanks, that's grand. Good night. Good night. Good night. night. Oh. <laughs> now, now. Robert. It is Edith. Oh, oh, it's got the Christian name, has it? It has. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's something. It's beginning anyway. Now, come on, greedy. Come on, come on, greedy. I say. What? Second speed, you know. We can't leave this up forever. Oh, why not? We're safe enough at the moment. The only man who can spoil the game is Spaulding, and he's miles away, safely tucked up in town. <laughs> Excuse me.
Excuse me, but could you tell me how much further it is to Marsland Minor? Not far now. Oh, really? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, here, 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 little girl. Oh, no, no, no. Maggie, whatever are you doing? <laughs> Let's see what it is, sir. She wants your orange. Oh, really? Oh, well, I, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that I should be unable to part with it. I've had no sort of sustenance during the entire day, and I look forward to enjoying the refreshing nourishment of this fruit at some later hour. I think that means you can't have it. Now, sir. Mad for oranges, she is. Proper man. And that's a fact. Indeed. We're nearly there. Oh, are we? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'd better collect my goods and chattels. Please. I? Your child has availed itself of my preoccupation to possess itself of my fruit. Maggie, give the gentleman back his orange. Slowing up. Can it be possible that we're coming into the station already? Station? Don't you know what you've done? You've pulled the communication cord. Oh, have I, really? Oh, my word. <laughs> We've got notice. Penalty for improper use. Five pounds. Oh, dear. Whatever shall I do? Five pounds? Excuse me. Hey! What do you think you're playing at? Come back! Oh, no, no! Excuse me! No! I tell you. Very well. 
We'll see what your uncle, Mr. Marsden, has to say about this. Hello? Back already? What's up? Well, I took rather a bad toss. Shook me up a bit. No, no I thought I'd chuck it. Wait a minute, Gibson, wait a minute. I'm sure you'll listen to reason. Give us till tonight. You shall have the money by then. Tonight? Yes. And what do you expect me to do till then? Walk about the countryside, picking blackberries? No, no, no. Come inside and have a drink. Oh. Make yourself at home. Yes, then we'll have time to talk it over. We'll play fair. Ah, uh, will you? Yes. Very really well. I'll risk it. But remember, I must have that money tonight. It's your last chance. All right, you shall. There you are. Hello. Who's this? Uncle, let me introduce a friend of mine, Mr. Gibson. How do you my do? uncle, Mr. Marsden. Pleased to meet you. Mr. Catamol. Catamol? Catamol? Any relation to... Shut up. No. No relation to shut up. Catamol. C-A-W-T-E-I-M-O-L-E. Catamol. Do come in. Oh, thank you, sir. I say, what about a knock up on the hard court? It's still fine enough. Good idea. <laughs> uh, how about a whiskey and soda? Let me take those things from you. Bob, you won't say no to a whiskey and soda, will you? <laughs> Never said no to a drink in my life. Need some for us? I'll have a gin and lime when I come down. Help yourself, Mr. Gibson. I shan't be long getting out of these things. Hey, Joe, that's a four-finger one. Do you come from the east? No, uh, the West End, uh, exclusively. Huh? Uh, I mean the West. I didn't know you fellows over here could stand a tot like that. Oh, we can stand anything. Yikes, tally ho. I've been looking at that coat of yours. Coat? Coat? What's the matter with the coat? I don't like it. It's out of balance and it's offensive to the eye. You're drunk, sir. That's what's the matter with you. For two pins, I'd make you offensive to the eye. I'm not drunk. And I say again, it's a rotten coat. It's cut all wrong. Now, I'll make you a... You'll do nothing of the sort, sir. Look, take your hands off me. How dare you, sir? Here, boys. This fellow's drunk. I'm not drunk. Oh, shut up, Gipsy. You're making a fool of yourself. You better come and sleep this off. Yeah, shove him in the library. Yes. <laughs> shove him in the duck pond, for all I care. my good man, but could I prevail upon you to convey me and my goods and chattels as far as Marsland Court? Yes, sir. Jump in. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. of impedimenta to manipulate. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my word, it has pedals like an organ. I wonder what that thing operates.
Ashford. This is Mr. Spaulding. How do you do? Delighted. Delighted. <laughs> yes. uh, could you spare me a moment, Mr. Spaulding? Yes, certainly. Yes. You start up a game. I'll join you later. Well, what have we lost? My dear Robert! Don't run away. <laughs> Just an eternal embrace. I was your dear father's dearest friend, and I was introduced to you when you were two months old and just about so high. Now, do sit down. That's right. Let me look at you and see if you resemble your dear father. He was a remarkably good-looking man. Dear me, no. Not an atom. I probably take after my mother. It happens that way sometimes. But no matter who you're like, I'm very happy to see you, especially today. Really? Because tonight, I guess you've heard I'm interested in spiritualism. Oh, yes. Tonight, I'm going to try and get into touch with your beloved father. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not much use at that sort of thing. No, but my society has obtained for me the services of a highly qualified medium. I'm palpitating with excitement. He may be here at any time. He may be on his way now. His astral body, without sound or effort, They'll be floating towards me, gently, ever gently. Ah, there you are, my boy. I've been looking for you. Bob, you'll be all right here for a bit, will you? Yes, I'll sit over there and read the Times. Come along, my boy. I've got some important things I want to talk over with you. Very good, sir. Excuse me. Do you know? My hat. You again. Oh, dear, dear. You again, too. What the devil are you doing here? Well, I have come to see Mr. Marsland. I'm not safe in London. Money was demanded of me with menaces. I left there positively in fear of my life. But you're no safer here. Do you realize the sort of people you've fallen amongst? No. I... Well, you're not suggesting. Why, here, you're not only in fear of losing your money, but your goods and chattels as well. Oh, my word. I... What do you suggest I'd better do? Get back to London as quickly as you can. But I don't like London. Now listen to me. I'm not going to have a nephew of mine get into trouble. So clear out. Come along. And don't let anyone see you. No. Don't go out there. Get in here. Get in oh, here. No, 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 no. I won't go in the cupboard. Look here. I was the strongest man in India. And I strangled tigers and tore them in pieces. And that's what will happen to you. If you don't get in that cupboard. Tigers? Yes. <sighs> Excuse me. My orange. <laughs> Your orange. Do you know? Get in there. It's the only place you're safe. Oh, how do you do? So you're the dissolute young nephew, are you? Oh, am I? Really? Why? You're the young man whose name's a byword in the West End. What lovely eyes. You're the person whose disgraceful escapades we read about in the papers. And the sweetest no. You're the rake who's been having such a hectic time in London. Ah, that is true. Do you know, I don't like London. I wonder you're not thoroughly ashamed of yourself. Why, really? Well, I've done nothing. To think you're the young man they wanted to marry me off to. Well, that wouldn't have been so bad. I, what? All right, Parker. Quick, someone coming. Get in there again. In here? Hi. Oh, I don't like cupboards. You know, I'm getting all cramped in here. And do you know... Ah, one moment. I want your help again, young fellow. Yes, sir? I'm in the devil of a fix. That wretched nephew of mine's turned up. Really? Yes, and I wouldn't hold him into the world. I want you to get rid of him. I've got him in the cupboard in there. What? Yes, with all his goods and chattels. Get rid of him. Where to, sir? Anywhere. London, America, Camberwell, Potter's Bar, anywhere. Right, I'll do my best. Yes. Good. Whatever happens, my old friend Marsden must have seen him. I'd be a laughing stock with him forever. I'll do your best for the old boy, and I won't forget it. Right you are, sir. I'll tackle him. Oh, come on out, you. <laughs> Mr. Catterbowl, <laughs> how fortunate to find you here. 
Has that dreadful tiger person gone? Yes, for the moment. But why have you come here? You were told to stay in my rooms in town. Ah, but that was impossible. Life for me in your rooms was just one shock after another. And no sooner do I reach the comparative safety of this house when I meet that tiger strangler from Pune again. Really, I believe that man's a lunatic. Never mind him. Oh, but I do mind. Oh, my. I'm very hungry. Do you know? I haven't had a solitary thing to eat during the entire day with the exception of an acidulated drop. And I have such a pain right, right, right where my hat box is. Will you come along to the library and eat your orange? The library? Yes. Oh, I'd be glad to. Any place but that frightful cupboard. Uh, but do you know, I feel that I shall require something more substantial than an orange. You'll probably find some biscuits in there. Yeah, biscuits? Oh, my, too starchy. Yes. Oh, my dear boy. What, Miss Ashford? Have you seen a stranger? Huh? A stranger? Oh, excuse me. Uh, do you know, I've lost a button. Will you get back? But it's a very important button. And I was right. He is here. And I know who it is. You do? Yes, the medium. The what? The medium I was expecting. Oh, yes, yes, of course. The medium. I must see him. I simply must. Oh, no, no. But why? Well, uh, he's very much exhausted. I must have perfect rest and quiet for tonight. I quite understand. Yes. These celestial beings are so highly organized. Yes, he's just a mass of organization. He must be. The poor thing. I'll leave him to rest. Yes, that's right. Leave him to rest. I say, Harry, Spaulding's turned up. No. Yes, I've shoved him in the library with Gibson. And Gibson? Still unconscious, absolutely passed out. By the way, Miss Ashford thinks that Spaulding's the medium for the seance this evening. Have you thought what will happen if Earl Spaulding meets Uncle Marsland and tells him he's the private secretary? Your goose will be cooked. Exactly. So off you go to the lounge and keep them from meeting. I've got a game with Edith and I'm going to win. I'm most frightfully sorry, really. Oh, aren't we going to play? It's too late now. I've got to go in and dress for dinner. I waited. Yes, I know, but I couldn't oh, help it. you see. all right. As a matter of fact, I've been able to have a nice, quiet think. Oh? What about? Oh, mainly about young Mr. Douglas Catamo. Do you know, I think you may have been right. Perhaps I've misjudged him. Yes, well, I'm frightfully glad you've changed your mind about him. After all, there's no harm in a young man sowing his wild oats. Exactly. I don't suppose he's ever done anything to be ashamed of. Huh? I mean, there he is. Take it or leave it. After all, he's never pretended to be anything but himself. Uh, no. One can't help liking him for that. Edith. What? Yes? You know, you look perfectly adorable. Why, Mr. Sport? You are too, and charming and innocent. <laughs> oh, I'm not a bit like that. I think you are. No, I wouldn't deceive you. There's one thing in the world I can't stand is deception. Don't you agree with me? Well, there are exceptions. No, I like people to be frank and open. Yes, but there are times when one can't always be as one seems. Are oh, there? Yes, for instance. I don't suppose I seem very much like a private secretary. No, you don't. No, probably because I'm not one. Not? No, but I'll explain that later. Why not now? No, now I want you to think of me as a man, any man, who's fallen madly and crazily in love with the most adorable girl in the world. Really? Tell me, have I got a chance? Have I? No, I'm afraid you haven't, Mrs. Paul. I've already met the man I'm going to marry. But Edith, I thought, I was almost certain that are you sure you're in love with this fellow, whoever he is? He is. I don't believe it. Are you sure you love him? Yes. Quite sure. I say, old man, what are you doing here? You ought to be keeping an eye on Spaulding. He's all right. He's perfectly peaceful. I dare say, but what are we going to do with him? Dearest if I know, we've got to get him out of the house somehow. Yes.
Awful bore, this seance business. But Uncle does it just to humor the old girl. Yes. She told me she was going to try and get in touch with Spaulding's father. Old flame of hers, I gathered. And talking about Spaulding, when are you going to tell old Catamel the truth? We can't hold out much longer. Gibson will come round, demand his money. Gibson's still out, completely out. Anyway, give me till after dinner. I'll have one more shot with Edith, and you'll see that... Oh. Excuse me. Good Lord, you again? How did you get out of that shed? Oh, well, I was mercifully released by your gardener shortly after I regained consciousness. Huh? Regained consciousness? Yes. I unfortunately received a contusion on my head from a falling flower pot which suspended my animation. Yes, I'm sorry to hear about that, but you can't stay here, you know. Well, would you mind telling me where I am to stay? I refuse to return to London. Wouldn't it be possible for me to see my employer, Mr. Marsland? What? After you've disobeyed his express orders, he told you to stay in town. Oh, well, I couldn't help he it. He won't accept any excuses. If you value your job, you'll either go back to London or lie low till he sends for you. Oh, my job. Uh, well, then I'd better choose the latter course and lie down. Yeah, lie up. Uh, what is it? Lie, lie low, yes. What about a cocktail? Quick, he's coming. Is he? Come on, out with him. Where, where, where? In here. No, 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 gentlemen, not in there again. I'm here. No, 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 over here. No, here. Gentlemen, please, do you take me for a concertina? There. There. Come on, come on, come on. But gentlemen, please, my bottle of milk. Get under there or I'll bring you. But I'm very hungry. Shut up. You'll have a cocktail, Bob. No, no. No use for them. I'm seeking to try sherry. Oh, help yourself. Uh, and where's Mr. Gibson? Oh, he's... He's uh, uh, rest. He hopes that you'll excuse him. Oh, really? Uh, and where's Miss Ashford? She's waiting for her spiritualistic friend. He's coming to hold the seance, you know. Oh, yes, of course. Come on, Ollie. There's Mr. Spaulding. Hello. Hello. Where's your spooky friend? He's composing himself in my sitting room. Won't he join us at dinner? No, that would disturb him. He's anxious to keep his mind on as high a plane as possible. In that case, we'll go in, eh? Shall we? Not for me, thanks. I, too, must divorce my mind from mundane things. I'll walk on the terrace, I think. Oh, very well. Come along, old man. I'll just finish this, Sherry. Now then, boys, dinner. Come along, my dear. You won't be long, Bob, will you? No, no, I'm just coming. My hat. You again. Oh, dear. You again, too. Come out. Oh, really? I... Come out. Come out. Didn't I warn you to make yourself scarce? Well, that's what I'm very anxious to do, but I have no place to go, and night is coming on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, dear, dear. Come on. Never a man so unfortunate. Uh, never. Not in there. The ventilation in that chest is highly inefficient. Look here, young man. I was the strongest man in India. And... I remember. That settles you. Come along, Bob. Coming. I'm not sure. Madam, I implore you. Don't implore me. Let me implore you. Let us hold converse together. You know my one desire. Come. Come. Sit down. This indeed gives us food for thought. Food? Madam, may I tell you my story? I should love to hear it. With the exception of one acidulated tablet. I'm sure it must be most interesting. Oh, it's appalling. But time presses. Could we not employ the moments better? Why, no. No, that would be impossible. No? No. You mustn't be nervous with me. You know why you've come here? Well, I, I thought I did, but I'm beginning to wonder. You've come to satisfy the one desire of my heart. Oh, have I? 
Yes. Later we shall know each other better. Oh, well. But really? now your spirit guide is waiting to preside over the seance. I'll go and fetch him. Do. When I return, you will have doubtless become invisible. Merged yourself into the astral. A lunatic asylum. Salt, you? you take salt with everything? No. But don't you think there are some things one can hardly swallow without a pinch of salt? Such as? Oh, a tall story, for instance. A tall story? Or a clumsy deception. A, a what? Exactly, Mr. Catamole. So you know? Oh, yes. Say, you make me feel like... Cheese? <laughs> now for the sales. Oh, yes, sales. I hope you won't keep us sitting up half the night. So do I. Oh, I'm sure it won't be long, sir. Now then, come along, you boys. <laughs> There's no slipping back for another glass of port. <laughs> Here they all are. Oh, uh, yes. Will you come and meet them? <laughs> yes. Yes, here we are, ready for the fray. This is Mr. Nebule, who will conduct the proceeding. How do you do? How do you do? My guest. How do you do? I am. How do you do? Invisible. He's done it. Astralized himself. What's that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Oh, now, will you all seat yourselves in a circle? No, now, boys, lend a hand. I'll lower the lights. We must concentrate, you know. Yes, yes. Must it be a perfect circle? Hmm? Uh, no, 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 no. A square one will do. Mr. Nebule will endeavor to get in touch with an old and dear friend of mine. Mm, yes. The atmosphere is most unfavorable. There are unbelievers present, I fear. <coughs> However, I will put the question. Robert Spalding. Robert Spalding. Are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Are you happy where you are? No, it's so hot. Hot. But are you not up above? No, down below. Oh, how dreadful. And to think you have to stay there forever. Oh, I hope not. Will you, will you materialize yourself? May we see you? Certainly. Do you know? I shall see him. Look. At last. At last. Oh. Tell us, are you Robert Spaulding? No, I'm not. I'm Sidney Gibson of Bond Street. Oh, Mr. Gibson. My business is not with you, sir, but with these gentlemen. And that one in particular, Mr. Douglas Catamole. Douglas, Douglas Catamole? You are drunk, sir. You ought to be kicked out. Eh? That's Robert Spaulding, Mr. Marsden's private secretary. It's Douglas Catamole, and he owes me a thousand pounds. Is that right? Yes. Quite right. This is Mr. Douglas Catamole. Answer me, sir. Are you my nephew? Yes, Uncle. You see, I... A thousand pounds is what he owes me. Well, what of it? Well, he won't pay. He's a waster. Ignores his creditors. Throws his money about in nightclubs. 
gambles, drinks. Is it true? Yes, sir. Well, I'm jolly glad to hear it. Put it there, my boy. Uh, but look here. Ah, you cleared out, Gibson. I'll settle with you. You shall have your thousand. Yes. And before I go. Come to... on, Gibson. I told you it would be all right. Oh. That appears to see you out. Yes, but I don't want to go. Then don't. What? But wait a minute. If you're my nephew, who's the other fellow? Old Galoshes. Oh, look! Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, what is it? <laughs> look! He's materializing! Oh, discard your mantle! Excuse me. Who the devil are you? Me? Why, I'm Robert Spaulding, your private secretary. And I'm so pleased to meet you at last. Oh, 